Hey there! Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Hi, everyone. I'm Deb Flaschenberg. Welcome to Yoga Birth Babies, a podcast produced by Prenatal Yoga Center. We will be diving into everything prenatal yoga, birth, and baby-related, hoping to inspire, educate, and empower you through your journey into motherhood. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Deb Flaschenberg, and I am your host of Yoga Birth Babies, and today we're going to talk about when your O stands for ouch. Yes, we're going to talk about sex after babies and pelvic floor dysfunction. I brought this up in one of my postnatal yoga classes recently and all of a sudden some heads snapped in my direction and they're like, what is that? When are we talking about that? When's that podcast come out? So I know this is a topic that most folks want to dive into. So to have this conversation, I have Christina Walsh. Let me tell you a little bit about Christina. So Christina is a physical therapist specializing in integrative manual therapy. Christina and her co-founder, Jen Lormand, have a combined 36 years of experience supporting postpartum folks holistically through prolapse, diastasis recti, and more. And she's the co-creator of Tighten Your Tinkler. Now, if you've listened to my podcast, you might be surprised that we're talking about tightening the tinkler because you've heard me rant against over-tightening, over-tightening. And Christina discusses that. It's not about over-tightening. It's about balance. So I think you're going to get so much out of this conversation. So in this talk, we talk about what should new parents expect when it comes to sex after baby? What are some solutions to painful sex? And are Kegels really the answer? How might they contribute to pelvic floor problems? So we take a very deep dive, yes, pun intended, (laughs) into the pelvic floor to understand how you can have a more functional pelvic floor, which leads to a better quality of life. So I'm really excited for you to hear that conversation. Now, before we jump into this lively chat with Christina, I just want to touch base on what's happening at PYC nowadays. So we are heading into late late spring, soon to be summer, and we're still just revving forward. So we're continuing to have our classes six, seven days a week online, six days a week in person. We've wrapped up our teacher training for everything in my mind works in the school year (laughs) of our last one for this part of the school year of March, April. And we're already having people enroll for our early fall in studio in New York City and our late fall online. And when this podcast comes out, we are just getting ready for our online postnatal yoga teacher training. So if you're someone that wants to dive into the world of learning how to teach the perinatal community, check all this out on our website. We also have added an on-demand workshop that I'm so incredibly excited about and proud of. It is from my mentor and teacher, Terry Richmond. She's been on the podcast, I don't know, three or four times. She was my doula. She was my mentor. She was really, she's meant so much to me and she's so experienced. And her childbirth education course that has been a staple at PYC for years, for decades, is now available on demand. So you can check that out on our website along with all the other on-demand classes we have. And then the last thing I want to say is just, again, I always like to say thank you and offer my gratitude that you are part of the community. We are heading towards our next birthday, which is August of 21 years as a yoga studio. And I think maybe eight years, seven years with the podcast. So thanks for being part of our community. It may be that you're coming into classes. You might be listening to the podcast regularly. Maybe you're a past student. I just want to say thank you for showing up and making us what we are. We really wouldn't be here without you. So thank you. Okay, let's take another quick break and we come back. Please enjoy my conversation with Christina. Hey there. Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? 
And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Hi, Christina. How are you? I am great, and I'm so excited to be here. It's such an honor to speak to your listeners about this topic I am so passionate about. Oh, I actually, when I saw, first of all, thank you for applying to be a guest, but when I saw the name, when your O stands for ouch, I'm like, that is what we will be talking about. It totally, <laughs> it totally hit me because I work with a lot, you know, pre and postnatal folks, and I hear that more often than I am sad to report I do. And, you know, we know what happens when the pelvic floor is dysfunctional and we don't want the ouch. So I'm so excited to dive into this, but I guess before we do, I'd love to learn a little bit about you and what led you to focusing on pelvic floor physical therapy. Well, I, first of all, I, like you said, I'm Christina Walsh. I'm a mom of two and I live in New Orleans and my path to pelvic floor care came about in a kind of a back end sort of way. (laughs) I I always knew in my heart that I wanted to work with women around the childbearing years. It was something I was passionate about for a long time, and I can't really explain why. And I assumed when I went to physical therapy school that I would then take the the courses to be the women's health physical therapist, the pelvic floor PT. That is not where life led me. I ended up working in orthopedics and got some exposure through home health care and really a well-rounded view of the whole range of general physical therapy, which I'm grateful for. And then I suffered a whiplash injury Mm. that completely changed where I was leaning and what I was passionate about because I needed help. And I, I was exposed to integrative manual therapy, craniosacral therapy through my own recovery. And I just kind of dropped everything because I was like, this is what I need to learn how to do. My mind was blown by the healing capabilities of those manual techniques. It was like I found what I didn't know I was looking for. Mm -hmm. And so I dropped everything, went to go study that work. I still to this day have my body work practice as a physical therapist doing that type of work. But what then happened is life led me to connect with a one Miss Jennifer Lormand, who is my partner in our business now, taking care of women and with the core and pelvic floor piece. She came to me and ended up on my treatment table after her third child was born, seeking help for back pain and a very large diastasis, that separation of the abdominals. And we connected uh, in a very heart-centered way right away. She loved the work I was doing and said, will you please come work out of my personal training gym? All She was already working with um, postnatal population anyway. And she said, all the the moms that I work with need this type of work. Like I want everybody in my clinic to be on this table. And it was just like it was meant to be, you know, how things happen and there's such a gift in life. So I ended up practicing out of her clinic and it was the way we were able to collaborate was incredible. I then had a couple of children. She also had a history of traumatic births. So between the two of us, we were seeking help for our own core and pelvic floor dysfunction Now, Jen's story, again, is much more dramatic and traumatic than mine, and she was referred at a very early age for a full pelvic floor suspension surgery, diagnosed with stage two prolapse of all three compartments, and was absolutely hell-bent that that was not going to be her path. She said, I'm not having this surgery at this age. There's got to be a better way. And she realized when she went to the urogynecologist that she could Kegel like crazy. And he, the urogynecologist looked at her and said well, your pelvic floor is strong. You don't need pelvic floor therapy or anything like that. You're just doomed to surgery, basically. And she refused to accept that. And she thought, well, if my pelvic floor is strong, why does it still feel like there's things trying to fall out of my body? And the two of us, me with a fresher postpartum recovery underway and her with a lingering dysfunction she was looking to solve, stumbled upon a completely new, much more functional approach, a holistic approach to pelvic floor and core retraining that we were absolutely dumbfounded by how well it worked for us. And as clinicians and total nerds for what we do, we became impassioned to get it out there into the world. And we were using it with the women we were 
working with and their lives are being changed. And we thought, okay, if we want to create change, we can't just do it with testimonials. We're going to do research. No idea what we were signing up for at that point. (laughs) But we did a three-year university research study, partnered with a professor, tested and validated the protocol we had discovered and we're now teaching. And it's published in the Journal of Women's Health Physical Therapy. Shortly thereafter, the women in our research came back and said, will you please make this accessible somehow? I have so many friends and family who desperately need this relief. And we listened. We said, this is, it's incumbent upon us to get this out there and do everything we can to get this to the hands of the women who need it most. And so we created a business together. It is called Tighten Your Tinkler. Do not be fooled. Many women do not need any more tightening. In fact, we're going to talk about hypertonic pelvic floors today. It was named by one of our clients because the names we came up with, she said, were far too clinical and boring and meant for old women. And she said, how about tighten your tinkler? And we trusted her and ran with it. (laughs) And I'm so glad that we're having this conversation because as I mentioned to you before we went to to record that, when I first saw that was the name of your company, I'm like, no, that goes against everything that I teach my students. Do not overly tighten your tinkler. And so I'm so glad that I trusted when I looked at your background and what you stood for, I'm like, I'm so confused because it seems like we're on the same page, but that name is so, okay, there we go. We got it out of the way of why you're called Tighten Your Tinkler. Yes. So the community, if they're looking they're like, what, Deb, you're putting something all tight in your tinkler on there and we are always telling us not to. So I'm glad that we got that out of our way, out of the way. So thank you for that explanation. So let's jump into talking about the pelvic floor. So I guess the place I want to start is what do you think some of the biggest misconceptions, I think we just hit one of them, around the pelvic floor, around pelvic floor health is? Absolutely. I think I have three top ones. Okay. I will just itemize because sure. number one, and, and you've gone over this in previous interviews, like the recent one with Marianne, who's a wonderful therapist, um, is that pelvic floor issues are Absolutely not. I don't care who tells you they are not something you just have to live with. Absolutely not. It's not just the way it is because you had children or because you're getting older. I promise you that. Um, number two, um, um, the myth conceptualizing the pelvic floor as some kind of special singular unit that should be addressed in isolation as just its own thing. That is absolutely never the case. Nothing in our body works in Mm -hmm. isolation. And then the other myth is that women, I think, sometimes shy away from bringing up these issues because they are concerned that it's going to require being penetrated with devices and it's going to require internal work and it's going to require Kegels. Many women have tried that and it hasn't worked for them or or they have a history of abuse or trauma and they're not open or okay with those methods. Mm -hmm. So those methods are not required to make progress, to feel better and to restore your function, your dignity and your confidence. Yeah. It's interesting when I talk to my students about ways to have a balanced pelvic floor, that's kind of the language that we use at my studio. They are surprised that so much of the work is actually strengthening other muscles than the pelvic floor. I'm like, okay, we got to get your hips in there. We got your glutes, your adductors, your abductors, you know, what's going on with your, your core. And they're surprised like, oh, I shouldn't just engage my pelvic floor. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's about a lot of the other muscles are sleepy. And that's why the pelvic floor is trying to take over. So I like that you're putting out there that pelvic floor health is not just about Kegels and um, internal work. So thank you for, for opening that up. So let's, Absolutely. Yeah, so let's also talk about if someone doesn't know what's going on with their pelvic floor, how are they going to figure out, do they, do they not need tightening? Do they, do they need, I'm going to start that question over. All right, so let's move on to some indicators because here we're talking about a lot of people don't need strength. Maybe they need relaxing or maybe they're over relaxed and do need some strength. What are indicators of someone can figure out what's going on with their pelvic floor and maybe they don't need to tighten everything up and do Kegels? That is a great question. And the number one indicator as to whether or not you deserve and need to seek help in the realm of the pelvic floor is the symptoms. If you are 
peeing more than 10 times a day, if you're leaking urine for any reason, whether that's laughing, coughing, sneezing, jumping, or the gotta go urgency leaks, if you're getting up in the middle of the night to be, if you have that pressure and heaviness either at the front or the back of the pelvic bowl, if you're dealing with chronic back and hip tightness that you feel like many women report, gosh, I just feel like I constantly have to stretch my back. As you said, it is all one functional unit. Those are all signs that something is unwell and unbalanced in your core and pelvic floor, and you should seek help. Now, discerning the difference between is it just weak or is it tight, that can be a little trickier, but here's a a huge misconception as well is that if you have a tight pelvic floor, you also have a weak pelvic floor. A tight muscle is not a strong muscle. Mm -hmm. An overtight muscle is a weak muscle. The step that has to be added when you're dealing with hypertonic or overtight musculature is the active rest, the active relaxation, the stretching component has to be inserted before you add the strengthening piece. So whether or not you're dealing with quote unquote, just weakness, or you're dealing with tightness and therefore also weakness, the path to recovery can look very much the same because no one is going to be hurt by adding stretches, active mm-hmm. relaxation into their routine. So I don't want people necessarily get too caught up in what if it's tight? What if it's just weak? Choose to add the stretching, choose to add the active relaxation. No matter who you are, you will benefit from that. Mm-hmm. And if you are dealing with an overtight pelvic floor, it will absolutely be necessary for you to do that step prior to walking through the strengthening piece, which needs to be functional and needs to comprehensively, as you said, involve pelvic floor, deep abdominals, outer hips, low back. And it needs to be um, something that helps cue those muscles to come back online for you in everyday life. Not something that you have to think consciously about because that wasn't how they worked beforehand and before any of the dysfunction happened Mm -hmm. anyway. That makes a lot of sense. So if someone can't immediately, because I'm all about go see a pelvic floor PT. If someone can't get there quite quickly and they want to start relaxing the pelvic floor, which again, we just said is great for everyone. Is there anything, is there anyone that should definitely not work on the strengthening if they don't know what the state of their pelvic floor is. What would, what would signal to someone saying just relaxation? Don't work on toning. That's a good question. I, I think that, well, as I said, the person who needs to start with the relaxation does also need the strength piece, but they need it in a specific order of relaxation first. So signs, sometimes it is difficult to delineate am I dealing with a hypertonic or overtight pelvic floor? Or am I dealing with just a purely weak one? Because it's so complex because there's so many similarities in how those can yes. present. That being said, <laughs> each case is unique. However, we have noticed many trends in our practice with our clientele that, and again, these are correlations, not guaranteed associative yes. relationships, if that makes sense. So we've noticed that a hypertonic pelvic floor often accompanies very tight or hypertonic hip flexors. Uh, we've noticed that many women with overtight pelvic floors experience quite a lot of urgency. And they also in- experience incomplete bladder emptying, which is like, okay, how will I know if that's happening to you? I well, call that the second you- P. <laughs> like you get yes. up and you're like, oh no, there's still some there. <laughs> exactly. So that's exactly right. You pee and then you just have to pee again, like moments later. You're not fully emptying your bladder. And another sign that you definitely are dealing with a hypertonic pelvic floor is if you get up from peeing and then you leak afterwards, the little dribble. Um, another sign is if you're having pain with penetration with sex or with inserting tampons. Um Also, just statistically, from a correlation standpoint, you are at greater risk for a hypertonic or overtight pelvic floor. If you have a history of chronic anxiety or high stress, if you've dealt with chronic constipation your whole life, or if you've dealt with chronic coughing and asthma, because all those things, that repetitive downward force on the pelvic floor for years cause it to reactively over-tighten. So 
those are all indicators that you might fall into that realm of really needing to focus on resting and relaxing and stretching the pelvic floor prior to adding the strength piece. You just gave me something new to add to my list of what I talked to my students about. I did not know about the asthma and coughing. And then when you said it, I'm like, of course that makes sense. So thank you totally. for totally <laughs> like, yeah, I'm just like, as soon as you said that cough, like in my mind, I just kind of saw that down, like that outward cough puts it down, like a immediate pressure downward on the pelvic floor. And yeah, yeah, I hadn't, I didn't know that one or I hadn't like clicked it in my mind. So thank you. Thank you for teaching me I'm something. So happy to be able to add something because I, I totally feel so aligned with everything you've said about the approach that you take uh, when coaching women through these issues. So I'm delighted and honored Yay. to be able to add a, a little tidbit. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about ways for people to learn to relax their pelvic floor muscles. What are some of your key points of how you teach this to people? Oh, I get so excited about this because there is so much you can do at home and without needing a bunch of support. There are so many things you can do. Number one, you can stop bracing, holding. So many of us have learned through trying to look a certain way or present a certain way that we should be constantly squeezing one of our muscles, our glutes, our abs, um, our jaw. Anytime you can send that body a conscious message that bracing and squeezing is not your friend, that is helpful. Yeah, let's ask you to remind um, people that that horrible fitness cue of pull your navel to your spine is just wrong. (laughs) Let's just put that out there. Let's add that to your list of bracing (laughs) and tightening. We'll just throw that in there too. Absolutely. Yes. And, and it's not functional. You know, this goes back to the rest of the, I mean, we'll get into this more also, but so avoid kegling. That is not a functional strength exercise and it can lead to over tightening and hypertonicity in the pelvic floor. Avoid pushing your pee out. This is like a little nuance that many women are doing without even realizing it. What you want to do is let, you know, urination be a passive affair where you are consciously relaxing those muscles. Um, you're not, you know, we think, oh, I'll just shave off a few seconds. The toddler's at the door. The patient or client is waiting. My students are waiting. It doesn't set you up for a win. When you push that pee out, you actually cause urine to be left retained in the bladder, which means you're going to have to pee again sooner and you're at greater risk for UTIs. Um, so practicing relaxing that pelvic floor to let the pee out passively is a great little component of this. Um, If you're not already, please use a squatty potty (laughs) or toileting stool of some kind. Yeah. If you have Um, a toddler at home, you can also just grab their little footstool that they need to get to the sink. That can be also very useful. That's what I, (laughs) a little personal information folks. That's what I do. It works works in a pinch, but I will tell you, I much prefer two yoga blocks or a couple Mm. of fast food containers turned upside down or two of their stools because ideally you really want the width of the hips. Well, I guess it depends on how big the, um, the stool stool. is. Yes, Totally. Totally. My, what my kids actually have done is the opposite. They take the squatty potty and swivel it around to the sink and use it for their, oh. uh, their sink stool. <laughs> oh, I like that. There you go. Economizing <laughs> space. I like that. Yeah. But if you don't, yeah, if you don't have a giant house, then it works real well. <laughs> um, another thing you can do is focus on, there's never a wrong time to focus on breath work. Mm. This is huge for rebalancing pressure yeah, talk and the more whole abdomen. Yes. And I I know this is something that you teach in a yoga practice as well. And it is incredibly beneficial for bringing the body out of a fight or flight state, as well as better relaxing and synchronizing the passive peaceful movement of that pelvic floor, because the diaphragm and pelvic floor work together to support the core. Yes. So when we're actively working on breath work, expanding the rib cage in all three planes allow it. It goes back to just an energy of allowing, of letting, of passiveness, of peacefulness. And that breath work can be a huge component of bringing that pelvic floor into a more restful state and moving full its, through its full range of motion with that breath again. Can you talk um, a little bit about, I'm going to just keep pushing more into the breath work, if you don't mind. Will you talk totally. to so if the listeners out there are like, okay, what do you mean by the diaphragm and the pelvic floor? Will you talk a little bit about how they dance together? Absolutely. And I would 
I will take it one step further since you would like to dive into this. Is I that would. <laughs> the diaphragm and the pelvic floor are not the only diaphragms that move in yes, synchrony. That's true. We have the thoracic inlet is another place are which which like between your collarbones and your neck, that area, as well as your jaw and throat is another diaphragm where you can think of a diaphragm as any place the body like the is soft kind of palate. divided. Is that what you're thinking? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And and that whole region. And so that is why you want to focus. And I'm sure, I don't know, I, I read Ina May when I was prepping for childbirth and she has a whole chapter on how relaxing the jaw facilitates relaxing the pelvic floor in childbirth, but yes. that applies in other realms other than just in childbirth. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've got the diaphragm, the breathing diaphragm, we've got the pelvic floor, they are the top and bottom of the core, right? So they need to be able to move in synchrony and both have their full range of motion. So as we're breathing deeply, it encourages that pelvic floor to gently stretch and relax down. So in that way, you are actively helping to develop that more better flexibility back into the pelvic floor when you focus on breath work and you're better balancing the pressure through that whole system. So you're less likely to have a pelvic floor that feels like it needs to guard and support and squeeze and over tighten. Mm -hmm. That is so good. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, let's talk about Kegels. I feel like that is such a hot topic. Let's talk about (laughs) why they may not be the answer. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on Chumbacasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the chumba life. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay, we are back. So why are Kegels not always the answer? And how might they contribute to pelvic floor problems? Absolutely. Okay. My favorite. So first of all, would we ever in any realm of exercise or physical therapy train, a, train or strengthen a muscle without movement in any other realm? Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. So just from a general standpoint, it makes no sense. Um, I think it's what has been taught for so long because it's all people understood or knew in many places. So they're doing their best. I don't, I'm never throwing anyone under a bus. We all get into caring professions because we care and we want to help other people, but sometimes there's room for progress. <laughs> um, but one, the way that Jen explains that I've heard her do it this way one time and I absolutely loved it because it's a clear visual. Here's why it doesn't make sense. It would be like if you went to your personal trainer and you were like, okay, I just got a new job. I've got to lift these really heavy boxes from the floor up to a really high shelf again and again all day long. I need more upper body strength. And they were like, okay, sure, girl, I got you. Okay. Hold your elbow at a 90 degree bend, squeeze your bicep and relax it, squeeze your bicep and relax it. And that's what they told you to do. You would get strong only in that position. And it would not, in fact, help you to lift the boxes from the floor to the high shelf all day long at all. And so that is essentially what Kegels are strengthening in that tiny little position. But I need my pelvic floor to work for me when I'm in a deep squat picking up a laundry hamper and I sneeze or I'm (laughs) driving and I can't cross my legs uh, without crossing a terrible accident. So... (laughs) (laughs) And so functional pelvic floor strength is not attained from bracing and squeezing in one 
static position. And also it doesn't make sense because if you think about it, was, was your pelvic floor something you had to consciously activate prior to the injuries or the dysfunction that you're dealing with now? Absolutely not. So it, it should not have to be a conscious muscle. And now there is a way, there are ways to access retraining that, getting it back online to function as it did prior as a subconscious, you know, coordinated effort between pelvic floor, deep abdominals, hip, outer hips, hip rotators, low back, and it can all be done through functional movement. And Kegels do, are, are not needed. And in fact, they can be harmful and cause over-tightening. Yes. Oh, you're speaking my language. All right. So now <laughs> we're going to shift to what we're here to talk about, about sex after pregnancy. I know that many people's ears just perked up. They're like, what? Yep. Let's talk about that. So what should new parents expect when it comes to sex after pregnancy? Because the pelvic floor is not the same. Absolutely. This is an incredibly important thing to to dive into and to discuss because this is the connection, your most intimate connection with the person you've chosen to do life with for most people, (laughs) for many people. And to have that relationship compromised is a very big deal. So Mm -hmm. first of all, it sex should never be painful. If that is the case, Do not accept that. Seek help. Ask around. Look it up. Find a trusted source. It should not be painful. And there are so many nuances of how dysfunction in in sex can present after having children. And I can go into many of those nuances because they somewhat they have somewhat different solutions. Um, There's of course there's pain with penetration, um, as we talked about, can be an indication of that hypertonic or overtight pelvic floor. And that can also happen if you have a history of sexual or birth trauma, because so much of a sexual experience is a mental and emotional experience. So that may be something you need to seek outside therapeutic intervention for, as well as active relaxation to stretch and open and release and relax that pelvic floor. Now, there are so many other nuances of pain or discomfort with sex after kids. And none of these are things you have to just live with. So, so many women would come to us and say, no, I'm not having pain with sex. And we'd dive a little deeper and say, okay, well, do you have any discomfort afterwards that you didn't have before? And they said, well, yeah, actually, you know, swelling and puffiness and soreness and heaviness afterwards. And okay, well, there's also help for that and you don't have to just live with it and it's not normal. It's not just the way it is. That can be a sign of some pressure imbalances, some muscular tone and weakness through that area. So certainly you can get some functional pelvic floor strength added and that will resolve that. But one thing you can do on your own at home for that particular issue is lay in your bed on your back with your knees bent, take the pillow out from under your head, insert it, place the pillow under your hips and pelvis so that your pelvis is basically elevated as if you would a sore or injured knee or Mm. ankle. And just simply lay in that position for five to 10 minutes. And I love what Jen always talks about. She says, it feels like you're putting your pelvic organs back on the shelf. That's what my pelvic floor physical therapist, again, so I'm, I'll just be very transparent with my life. So after my first child, which I pushed him out for five hours. So now imagine oh, all you. that mm-hmm. pushing. We know that's not good. You know, like, not was I only pushing a baby down, but all those organs down too. So I had some pelvic yes. organ prolapse. So she was having me do like pelvic rest after by putting my pelvis up on a pretty thick pillow. And she was like, you're inviting your organs back into their proper location. You're using gravity. And and as you describe that now, like most, as you're saying, like lay on your bed with your pelvis up, I'm like, what parent doesn't want to say, I have to shake five minutes for myself. Yes. (laughs) Yes. It is what the doctor said. I need to do this. So (laughs) doctor's orders. So I'm glad that you're bringing that up. Yes. And that is a, that is a positioning technique that brings massive relief that is not just it to be used in regards to pain and discomfort during or after sex. That is, as you said, that is something you can use to relieve back hip pressure, pelvic pressure or heaviness at any time of day or night. It is an absolute gift to yourself. And it's Try stress it relieving. And we know yes. that stress can cause a tight pelvic floor. So there we're going full circle. 
Absolutely. One other nuance I'd yeah. love to just dive into Please. So because there are so many nuances in this um, sex after kids realm. Another one that um, many women who are experiencing some degree of prolapse, and I'm not making any diagnoses over the internet, but it is common with some degree of prolapse to experience actually during sex, a, a more crampy, painful feeling up higher yeah. in the abdomen. Huh. I did Basically, not know that one. because things are getting like jostled Pushed. about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. And so that is another nuance that can present. And once again, not something you have to accept or just live with that, um, pelvis elevated position I just described is great for that as well. And adding more functional strength to give that up and in support is also a great anecdote or uh, relief for that. So. These these things come in so many nuances, but there is help available. All right. So that was, a, you gave some solutions for pain after sex. What are some of the reasons? Is it just um, the actual birth? Is it, what could be other reasons that someone's having painful sex after baby? That is a great question. It It can be because of a lack of tone. So things are, it's almost ends up can be like a plunger effect instead of a glide and slide. And that can be lubrication alterations from hormone changes that which continue through breastfeeding. That can be a low tone in the muscle because of the stretching where things are just getting shoved about instead of sliding and gliding optimally. Got it. Um, and it, it can be alignment issues as well. So I didn't get to that a moment ago, but please, after children are born, see a skilled physical therapist or a Webster certified chiropractor is another great resource because they are trained in adjusting the pubic joint. Um, we certainly want all those structures to find their happy place again. <laughs> and our bodies are always doing our best for us, but sometimes they need a little help to get things uh, in their uh, proper alignment again after the very, very large physical event of pregnancy and childbirth. That makes total sense. I love that you brought in the bony pelvis because oftentimes we're just thinking pelvic floor musculature, but the muscles attached to something. <laughs> Absolutely. And, well, the, and, yeah. and circling, coming full circle on the whole overtight and hypertonic pelvic floor piece, um, an out of alignment bony pelvis can contribute to the muscles. You know, if the pelvis is out of alignment, especially that pubic joint or tailbone, because those are big connection points for the pelvic floor. If there's an asymmetry, the body might go into spasm on one side through the soft tissue of the yeah. pelvic floor, trying to hold things stable for you. Again, I always want to frame this as your your body's always trying to work for you and support you. So if something feels wrong or is off, trust yourself. First of all, trust yourself. It is off, but it doesn't mean you're broken. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean things are hopeless. Your body's always trying to support you. It just needs some facilitation added. And I'm glad you brought up the tailbone situation because if someone, if the birth team isn't super supportive of alternative positions and flat on your back, then we know there can be tailbone injury because it's an, it's an upward slope for baby. And depending on the position of the legs or, you know, the force or the baby, that can kind of plow, they can kind of plow into that tailbone. I've had students that their tailbone has been dislocated. Very rarely is it broken, but, and then I've had physical therapists that have said, and I know, um, Mary and Ryan, who I know you listen to her podcast and she and I work together a lot. She says that she's often helping people realign their tailbone and you're absolutely right. There's so many pelvic floor muscles that go to the tailbone, pubis and sacrum. So that for listeners out there, if you have tailbone pain, that absolutely can be an indicator that you need to get your, your pelvic floor checked out. Wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Yes. And find a skilled manual provider who can check, assess, and adjust that for you. And there are so many options. Um, again, a physical therapist, a skilled chiropractor, um, craniosacral therapy is a very gentle way to open and reset some of that alignment. Um, so there are so many options, but please, yeah, seek the help of a skilled provider for optimizing that alignment again, because that will only 
further an upward spiral of healing as you work the breath work, the relaxation, and then that functional strengthening piece, which all of that will work better and together more when you've got the bony alignment piece addressed as well. Can I throw something at you about reasons for painful sex after baby? What about healing from tears? Hopefully are there more natural than episiotomies, unless the episiotomy was really necessary, which we know that with World Health Organization and ACOG, they're saying they really shouldn't be done unless absolutely necessary. I went on a rant there. So let me circle no, it back. I, but look, I, I have a lot of passion about informed birth choices. So I'm really <laughs> holding myself back because we could go down a very long we tangent. We could go down a episiotomy. <laughs> so I'll pull it back to, can you talk a little bit about healing from vaginal tears? Because that may be, it's kind of like, if someone has that vaginal tear and we're talking about stress, they may already feel apprehensive and a little stressed about sex. And then we know that stress reaction is going to engage the pelvic floor, which is going to make things more painful. So I guess it's kind of like a double whammy of dealing with the stress and the anxiety around sex with with vaginal tears, as well as what to do to make sex more enjoyable with when someone's healing from those vaginal chairs. Is that, that was a lot I just threw at you. I know I have so many thoughts and I love this question because it's, it's nuanced and it's multifaceted, like so many things. So (laughs) number one, talk openly to your partner, please key them in to what it is that you're worried about What's upsetting you? If they don't, they cannot read your mind and they don't know what it feels like in your body. Only you know that. It is imperative to rope them in this discussion because they love you and they don't want to hurt you. But if they don't know what it feels like in your body, only you can share that with them. Um, and that is incredibly empowering in navigating the journey of return to sexual intimacy after birth is doing it together. And that way, both parties feel safe so that if you feel like, okay, I think I'm ready now, and then you decide, oh gosh, it's it's uncomfortable, I'm not, your partner wants to support you in that. If <laughs> they love you. So another thing you can do to empower yourself to feel ready, if this is within your realm of comfort, is to take a mirror to check on the healing visibly and to explore with your fingers how it feels to touch that tissue mm. again. Once once the wound is healed, I'm not saying go rubbing on a fresh tear. Yeah, don't do that. Um, <laughs> no, don't do that. But those things can be incredibly empowering and making you feel like you can be at peace with moving forward, exploring being sexually intimate again. So that takes so much of the fear away. And opening that dialogue with your partner is just the most important piece. Yeah, these are great, 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 great suggestions. So that's talking about the after. And again, really wonderful. I can communicate going back to the communication with partners is so important. What can people do prenatally to lessen their chance of pelvic floor dysfunction that might show up postpartum? This is another wonderful question. And this, I do get to talk about informed birth choices here. I'm so glad Yay. you brought this up. My personal belief and professional belief on this from all realms of my experience is that you are setting yourself up for the least amount of injury and trauma in this area when you give birth, if you have set yourself up to birth in a place and in a way that you feel supported and safe and that you feel able to fully get into that energy of letting and allowing and relinquishing and being because birth is an altered state of consciousness and you will decrease your risk of injury if you feel safe and if you feel supported and you feel at peace. Those things are the most important piece, but in addition, that breath work is massively important to prepare for a safe and smooth delivery. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you think that people should be working with a pelvic floor PT prior to giving birth? That is not necessary. I wouldn't say if you are having symptoms, if you're having symptoms. So if you're having leaks, the incontinence, um, pain in any way, 
way, please receive help during pregnancy. Be that something like our signature program, be that working int- intimately one-on-one with an in-person therapist. Do not accept all of that as your normal during pregnancy either. That being said, it can be harder to get fully kind of a- head and on top of and healed from those things during pregnancy, because what we can't do is what anyone can't do is stop the downward force of the growing baby. (laughs) (laughs) But what can be done is you can receive alignment adjustments Mm -hmm. that help and you can be taught rest positions and postures that might relieve things. So there are things that you can do and turn to, but if you're not symptomatic and in pain or experiencing dysfunction, I don't think that that's necessary per se okay. to set you up for success as much as it is to carefully select your birth plan and your birth team, your birth provider, and ensure that you are mentally able to go into that process in a state of as much peace as possible. Yes, no, I agree. All right. So this might start to dip into a little bit about your program, but what are some ways you help your clients resolve pelvic floor issues without Kegels and without internal vaginal devices? Now I'm going to again put in there that I remember seeing one PT who I soon did not see. And she, she gave me this device that in hindsight, I'm like, Oh my God, it's definitely making things worse because it was creating like this. Um, it was an internal device that I think it was something about the fast twitch muscle fibers. And whenever I used it, I actually had incontinence afterwards. And then years later, when I started to look more into like understand the pelvic floor more, I'm like, oh my gosh, it was overstimulating the pelvic floor. And then it was in that over tight state. So again, maybe I went too far <laughs> sharing, but that's why I'm excited about your methods of not a ton of oh, internal but- devices. Mm-hmm. Completely. And you've just illustrated perfectly the type of women who end up finding us and are so relieved to find us and benefit dramatically from working with us. Many of them, not all of them have tried other things first. Many are drawn to the option. You know, not everyone has the accessibility to go see a specialist in person, uh, nor maybe the care to do so. So we're proud and honored to be able to offer an option that absolutely works and has proven to work that you can do from the comfort of your own home through our signature program. And we're also, um, you know, it's incredibly important that the whole protocol is addressed that we talked about earlier. And that is what we teach in our program and what was tested in the research, that you're going to check alignment. You're going to self-assess where you're starting from. The program is going to then walk you through decompressing stretching, releasing, breath work. Then we build on the functional movement series that we really dialed in. We, as moms, mothers ourselves, we're very interested in um, efficiency <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, once you're parenting, you're pulled in many directions if you weren't already. And so we were able to dial down the routine of the movement series to 10 minutes a day. Oh, wow. So that is something that many women appreciate about the protocol and something you do with your clothes on in any room of your house with your kids, if you like, and something that works and has been proven to work as an alternative and another option that's out there to address these issues, get your confidence, your dignity back and move on with your life. <laughs> Yes, that is so important because as someone who did a lot of pelvic floor PT after my first, it was like, she wanted me to do it twice and I did, I did it, but like finding the time was really difficult. So I'm glad that you narrowed it down to 10 minutes a day. Okay. We're going to take another break. And when we come back, what is one final tip or piece of advice you'd like to offer new or expectant parents? We will be right back. Hey there. Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. 
So we're back. So you can go at this either from someone that's had two babies yourself from the mom standpoint or from the PT standpoint, or maybe a combo of both. So what is one final tip or piece of advice you'd like to leave our audience with? I would say give yourself grace. This journey of parenting and childbirth is unlike anything else in life. And it is beautiful, but it is vulnerable and can be tumultuous. Please listen to your body. If your body's always trying to support you, and if it is giving you signals that something is not in alignment with where you need to be at that stage in your healing journey, listen, pull back. It's your body saying, not now, please. It's not saying never. Please listen and tune in and honor your body's signals in this tender time and believe in what's possible in your healing as well, because your body is always trying to work for you. If you deal with any of this stuff, you are not broken. It's not the end of your story. There is help and hope available and your body wants to help walk with you there. I like that. Where can people find your work? We are in all the places <laughs> um, at at titan.your.tinkler on Instagram. And I, I neglected to mention our tagline is silly name, serious results. <laughs> <laughs> we have lots of education on YouTube to help women see how so many of these issues that people try to splice into separate buckets are all the same, really underneath sharing the same root cause. And to dive more deeply into the various symptoms and types of prolapse and diagnoses so that if you want to go down that rabbit hole and really understand what's going on in your body, we have that support for you, teaching both from the personal and professional perspective that we have on these issues. Um, we're also, of course, tightenyourtinkler.com where you can find a really cool or Instagram, our five minute quiz. We call it our root cause quiz because it takes you through a quick series of questions that helps you subconsciously really quickly, clearly see the connectedness between all these issues that many women have been told are separate when in fact they are not. We will have all that in our show notes. Well, this has been such a fun conversation. I have to admit, anytime I can talk about the pelvic floor, I just light up because it is so important. And it is, luckily it's being talked about more and more and more, but it's something that can really affect somebody's daily life and quality of life. So thank you for putting the work out that you do. It really helps so many people. It is such an honor. And thank you, Deb, for allowing me to speak from the heart to your listeners and give them this message of hope. Thank you. This has been an episode of Yoga Birth Babies, produced by Prenatal Yoga Center. You can catch us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope. I'm Deb Flaschenberg. Thanks for listening. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.